guys, it's Gretchen and welcome back to my channel. So I recently did a video where I went on to Claire's website, the chain store Claire's, went onto their website and I found their Pearson section and kind of did a reaction to it. Basically what they were telling, who've gotten Pearson's done there before, like what they should be doing as for aftercare, as well as what to expect when they get it done and all the fun things like, when can I change out my jewelry? And it was a lot of fun. If you haven't seen that video already, It'll be over here in the upper corner. You can go check that out, but watch this one first because I have discovered that Claire's not only has information on their website, but they also have a YouTube channel. So what are we gonna do today? We are gonna react to their Pearson information videos. Now they do have an entire playlist called Ear Pearsons at Claire's. And we're not gonna do all that because it's some of the videos are like people's experiences, getting Pearson's done there. We're not gonna do that, but they do have two specific videos that we're gonna look at. We're gonna look at both of them because one's only a minute long and the other one's only six minutes long. The first video that we're gonna look at is basically just ear piercing with Claire's. That's literally what it's called. That doesn't really make sense, but okay, whatever. This one's only a minute and nine seconds. So we're just gonna look at it, react to the information they provide. I'm assuming that the information on the website is basically gonna be what they put in the videos, just in a visual format. But yeah, so that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna have it up here on my phone, but I will have over here somewhere the video so that you yourself can watch. So first one we're gonna do is the ear piercing with Claire's. Okay, they're just looking at all the different things. All right, oh wait, hold on, go back. I want to see the actual type of jewelry that they offer. So, so looking here, it shows, I can't really see what's over on the left-hand side. It didn't really give too good of a view. I'm assuming it says gold because I do see an L and a D at the top of the left. So I'm assuming all of those options on the left are gold. Then you have 14 karat singles, not very many options. Then you have stainless steel. Then you have Claire's exclusive. Then you have titanium. They do actually offer titanium. Okay, that's actually pretty cool. I don't know if it's like legit titanium or if it's like stainless steel with a titanium coating. Is that a thing? Probably someone's done it. But they do have three options for titanium. And then there's the 24 karat gold plated. So obviously stainless steel is their biggest one. The gold over on the side also looks like it could be a big one. But I'm happy to see that they offer titanium. Like that's pretty cool. Way to go, Claire's. I mean, and stainless steel is not bad. If you've got an allergy to it, then titanium is a better option. They do offer a lot of like gold options, which is not good for initial piercings. I know gold, you automatically be like, oh, that's a great option. You know, gold is good. Not for a healing piercing. If it's completely healed, it's fine. But because it's such a soft metal, it's not a good option otherwise. All right, let's go. Oh, they're so happy. Oh, there were more options. Okay, it was a split second. Sign a waiver. Ooh, okay. Here they're showing the person how to properly clean the ear. They're probably gonna show that in the next video that I'm gonna react to as well, but we'll talk about it here since it's right here. They're showing the model ear with earrings on it and it shows that you take a cotton ball and you get the solution on it and you just kind of rub on top of the jewelry. First of all, that does nothing. If you're just rubbing on top of the jewelry, that just cleans the jewelry itself. That's not actually gonna get into the Pearson site. So I don't know what they were thinking with that, but probably don't do a cotton ball. You could do a cotton round. Q-tips. I personally don't have bad experiences with Q-tips. A lot of people don't like them because the little fibers, like little stray fibers can get caught in the jewelry, but those are better options than a cotton ball, I feel like. That's just my thought. Cotton ball just there's too many possibilities of there being stray fibers. All right, so this is the process of them piercing. So they take a little wipe. They've got a pen. It's not a Sharpie, so that's good. Oh, look, that was so quick and painless. See, they're taking the cotton ball and just going on top of the jewelry that doesn't get into the site. Hug your teddy while you get it done. Why is this, okay, first of all, why is this one associate dressed like a princess? Like, is that supposed to make you feel better? Cause honestly, that would terrify me. Oh, oh no, honey, you touched, oh, she touched her ears. Okay, high five. Okay, mom, let's go. Let's go look at the rest of the mall. Okay, so that was the 
first video, which is just, it kind of, there was no speaking. It kind of just looked like it was what to expect when you get your piercing done there. You can walk by any clears and kind of get the same gist if you watch someone get it done. But it was kind of nice to see what jewelry options they offer because I think they mentioned it on the website, but they don't really go into detail to actually see the little display that they have, especially to see titanium. I had no idea that they offer titanium. Now it's only three pieces that they offer that are titanium, but that's still better than nothing. So I cannot diss them for that because that is great. They offer a lot of gold options, which again, not good for an initial piercing, but it's fine later on. So the next video that we are going to react to is their Claire's aftercare video from 2015. Keep in mind that last video, the one that kind of showed you the experience of it being done. That was also from 2015. They might want to consider updating. If they want to be in the game, they really want to do this, they might want to update their videos. Let's just go into the aftercare video. Thank you for making Claire's oh. the worldwide choice for earlobe and ear cartilage piercing. You're not welcome. Our piercing specialists have made over 90 million ears sparkle in the last 50 years. Before your piercing, our associate should have taken some time with you to be sure you understood what was going to happen during the piercing process and reviewed our aftercare procedures on a sheet for you to take home. So that's kind of really nice that they actually have a sheet for you to take home that kind of spells out what you need to do. Whether or not that information is correct, remains to be seen, though according to what we saw on the website, it wasn't all that great. But it's great that they do actually hand you something in case you get home and you're like, oh no, I forgot what they told me. You have it on a piece of paper, so that's pretty cool. Even if you've had your ears pierced before, it is really important that you understand and follow our recommendations about the best way to take care of your new piercing until it is healed completely. Also good. Good advice. We're going to take you through the steps to clean your new piercing and tell you about a few things you should be aware of. To begin, remember that your piercing earrings should not be taken out until the ears are completely healed. Accurate. This is six to eight weeks for an earlobe piercing and eight to 12 weeks for an ear cartilage piercing. So from what I'm gathering this, they're saying the six to eight weeks for low piercings, eight to 12 weeks for cartilage piercings. You should definitely keep them in longer, but this is not that three weeks that the website was saying. So I'm thinking because this was done in 2015, I don't think they had that rapid aftercare cleanser yet. So they're just sticking with the standard. I don't know when they would have created the rapid aftercare one, but that's kind of what I'm gathering from this is that it's only the initial clairs aftercare cleansing kit, not the rapid one. Before cleaning begins, it is very important that you thoroughly wash your hands yep. with antibacterial soap. Yes. Also, try not to touch the new piercing unless it's time to clean your ears. Accurate. The front and back of the new piercing needs to be cleaned with the ear care solution that came with your piercing at least three times a day. Again, overkill. Maybe not that much. A saturated cotton ball or cotton swab, apply oh. the ear care solution to the piercing. See? Slide the earrings back and forth in your ear so the solution will get inside the piercing. Oh, see, that's why they tell you to do the twist then and all that. Holding the earring from the front, gently rotate a few partial turns, both forward and backward. At this time, check to make sure the clutch back is securely positioned in the safety notch. Ah. The earring back should never be flush against the ear. Oh, well, that's accurate. Be careful not to remove the earring. Remember, you will need to clean your piercing at least three times a day. You might want to do this once in the morning after you're done taking a shower or washing your hair, again after school or work, after and school. once more before bed. Twice a day is fine. Here's some additional points that you need to be aware of. Additional so points. Your hmm. will heal successfully. Okay. Hair can easily get wound around the post of the earring, so be sure. Very true. To watch be always be careful with your hair, with your, your piercings. Hair, you might want to keep it up and away from your piercing while it's healing. You're gonna keep it away from your piercing for six to eight weeks. Shampoo, cosmetics perfumes, sunscreen, or any other personal care products away from your newly pierced ears. Very good advice. Always keep those types of things if away from a new one. any of these products, or you've been exercising, swimming, or in a hot tub, clean your ears with the ear care solution as mentioned before. Also accurate. That's one of those times where you can clean it more than like twice a day. On or taking off clothing over your mm -hmm. head, brushing your hair, mm -hmm. sleeping, yes. wearing headphones or headsets, yes. or even talking on the phone so that your newly pierced ears don't get irritated. Use speakerphone. It's important to know that there are some issues that could become serious if you don't react to them. Okay. So please listen to this next section carefully. Listen to this next section. If you've had your earlobes pierced and you are experiencing any pain, redness, or swelling, 
that exists for more than 24 hours after a piercing? This is not a normal result of earlobe piercing. Um, yes it is. Redness and swelling can happen for, I don't know, weeks after you get a piercing done. That's pretty much normal. That's why you get those really long pieces of jewelry in there to account for swelling. So yes, yeah, swelling and redness is pretty normal. Please speak to a doctor if this happens for more than 24 hours. No, that's overkill. Like I'm a worry wart myself. That's overkill. You, you don't need to do that. You should contact your doctor. On the other hand, if your ear cartilage has been pierced and you are seeing any redness or swelling for more than 24 hours, our recommendation is to immediately remove the earring and see your doctor. I'm sorry, what? They're saying that if you experience any redness or swelling for a cartilage piercing for more than 24 hours, you should remove it and go see a doctor. What? No, that makes zero sense. Again, it's done with piercing gun, so maybe you should at that point, but then reconsider getting it done with piercing gun. But seriously? You're only giving it 24 hours before you're sitting there going like, oh my God, maybe I should take it out. No, you cause trauma to a part of your body by shoving this object blunt force through it. Of course there's gonna be redness and swelling and possibly pain. Don't remove it. Don't, don't remove it. No, you don't need to go see a doctor for that. Claire, you were doing okay with some of your advice. Now you've gone off the rails. Ear cartilage piercing carries a greater chance of serious infection, along with other risks. I mean, that's true. You should also be aware that ear piercing earrings that are too tight can cause embeddings and infection. An embedded piercing looks like the earring is beginning to disappear into the ear and the surrounding area is swollen and red. To help avoid this, Make sure the clutch back doesn't move past the safety notch on the post of the earring. The earring back should never be flush against the ear. Again, if the, the post is long enough, you shouldn't have to worry about that, but between the front and back of the these earring, don't have like different lengths when Each you go to Claire's. You your ear, remember to look for any signs of embedding, swelling, infection, or redness. True. If you see any of these signs of trouble, be sure to talk to your doctor right away. You don't need to go right away. The last thing we want to remind you about is the amount of time you'll need for your earlobe piercing or ear cartilage piercing to heal. If you've had your earlobes pierced, the ear piercing earrings should stay in for at least six weeks. Longer. Then you can remove the piercing earrings and insert other post-style earrings. Post-style earrings should be worn for at least six months, or the new piercing might get smaller or even close completely. Smaller? Oh, I guess they mean if you take it out completely. The piercing earring should stay in for eight to 12 weeks. Longer. Then the earring can be removed and a post-style earring should be worn for the first 12 months to ensure your ear cartilage piercing remains the proper size. It can close after 12 well, months. That's all there is to it. By following these simple steps, you'll be on your way to a healthy and successful healing process for your new earlobe or ear cartilage piercing. All this information and more is on the aftercare sheet provided. So it does kind of show you, it's the registry and release of liability, waiver of claims. Okay, so step one is what the store associate fills out. Um, step two is your information or the parent legal guardian, which is typically who is filling this out. And this is like all the things that you have to check like if you were getting a Pearson done at a reputable place, all the things like I understand, blah, blah, blah. Where the things? Okay, so it's on the website. And jewelry and accessories. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about earlobe and ear cartilage piercing aftercare. Don't forget to come back and see us once your piercing is healed for the latest in earrings. We look forward to seeing you soon. No, thank you. Okay, so basically it's the same thing that's on the website, just in a video format, but that's the first time I'm hearing them say, if you experience anything for more than 24 hours, go see a doctor or even remove the jewelry. Don't ever do that. That's probably one of the worst things that you can do. Go see someone who actually knows what they're talking about, what they're doing, if you ever have any concerns. Doctors, I will say, are not always the best ones because they are not trained for piercing but a piercer is. They are trained to know what is looking right, what is looking wrong, what to expect, what shouldn't happen, things like that. Doctors are just a more generic thing. They're like, oh yeah, that looks like an infection. Not the best people to go to. Not saying that you shouldn't go to doctors for things like that, but your better option is to go see a piercer for that because they are trained to know what to look for. Do not go back to Claire's. So basically what those videos showed us are basically the same thing that was on the website. Don't get your ears pierced at Claire's. Please don't get your ears pierced at Claire's. Not judging anyone, 
who has gotten their ears pierced at Claire's because like I mentioned in the last video, I myself have gotten piercings done at Claire's when I was much younger, didn't know any better. We all make mistakes. But yeah, they should really consider updating their videos if they wanna keep going with this whole narrative um, because 2015 was five years ago. Things change. Again, if you haven't seen the other video yet, go check it out. The website is a trip. But that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a big ol' thumbs up. Go on down there and hit that subscribe button, wherever it may be, because I don't know. Even though I do, this is just my shtick now. Also hit that notification bell in case you want to know when I upload, and in case YouTube wants to let you know when I upload, because I would really appreciate it. And until next time, bye guys. Mm -hmm.